Good morning, Facebook. What's up? So, we got some shit to talk about. And I know I'm probably going to make a lot of people or of what I do. People trying to judge me on my past. Now, you guys already know about my past. You guys already know. It's no secret that I went through some shit. But unfortunately this morning, I had to disown a certain family member because they were judging me. And they constantly treat me like a little fucking kid instead of the grown ass 32 year old adult that I actually fucking am. Like dude, if you see me out in public, don't treat me like a little kid. Treat me like a grown ass adult. Treat me like you're fucking equal. Treat me like a human being. And not some and disabled member. person. Because, because I'm not disabled. Let me tell you something. I'm more of a man than half the fucking people out there. And you want to know why that is? Because when I was born, I wasn't supposed to live. I mean, a lot of people don't know that story. That when I was born... I was not supposed to live. The doctors had given me 24 hours to survive. Because when I was born, I was born with one kidney and one very severely underdeveloped lung. And I was born one pound ten ounces. My arms and legs were the size of my mom's pinky and my head was the size of her fucking fist. I had to be put in an incubator for six months and then put on an oxygen tank after that six months until I was almost five. The doctors gave me only a 1% chance of survival. 1% chance of survival. Think about that. 1%. But yet, here I am, 32 years later. And I know my day will come when I have to return to where we all come from. I know there's a day that I'll have to answer and atone for all my sins. And atone for what I've done. And I'm fine with that. I'll gladly answer to everything I've done wrong. If I have done anything wrong, I'll gladly answer for those things when the time comes. When God calls me home, I'll gladly answer for those wrongdoings. And I will make those wrongdoings right. But what gets me is why is it that people feel like they have the right to judge somebody based on their past? Like, dude, nobody in this world is fucking perfect. Nobody. I don't care who you are. Nobody in this fucking world is perfect at all. You know, there are two people that have given me the best advice in the last two days than anyone's ever given me in the last seven years of me being bullied or being trolled. And you know what that advice, who that advice came from? Two very important people that are actually from my hometown in Florida. And I say my 
hometown, but it's really my second hometown down in Florida, down in Winter Haven. And those two people I'd like to give a shout out to right now, which is Nick and his girlfriend Amber, who are actually the ones that sent me this and the two new rings and basically everything that I'm wearing that you see that's new. They're the ones that hooked me up with that shit. But let me tell you something, man. Nick has given me so much good advice over the last couple of days. And Nick, I want you to know, man, that I appreciate the fuck out of the advice that you gave me. And I do take that advice to heart. And I am going to follow that advice, for sure. But the one thing that I cannot stand is when people go on the internet, they read something about you, and then they act like they fucking know you. Like, dude, just because you read it on the internet don't mean that it's fucking real. Haven't you ever heard the term, you can't believe everything you read on the internet? That's a term that even, even I grew up with, my family grew up with. Even my mom knows that one, dude. Like, I'm sick and tired of motherfuckers acting like they can just walk all over me. I'm sick of family members treating me like a little fucking kid when I'm not a little kid. I'm a grown-ass fucking adult who's trying to make an honest living doing what he's good at and has proven that they can make an honest living at that. But yet, I still get treated like a little kid. And it's fucking stupid. Yo, shout out to my little brother Joey. What's good, Joey? How you doing, man? Long time no see, bro. If y'all don't know this man right here, this man Joey right here, this is one. This is another one of my childhood best friends that I grew up with, man. This dude's like a second little brother to me, man. How you doing, Joey? What's good, bro? And, you know, and it's people like Joey here, and like my other two childhood best friends, Marcus and Rachel. Between Joey and Marcus and Rachel, let me tell you, these three know me better than any fucking body on the goddamn planet. Because these three I fucking grew up with. So they have a right to judge. Like, if I'm doing something stupid, they have that right to judge me. Because they know me on that fucking level. And they don't sit there and hold shit against me and are like, Oh, well, this is going on, but you're doing this. Like, this may be going on, but you're doing this, 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 and this. No. They take a look at the situation as a whole, and they say, Okay, yeah, you may be doing this, but this is what started all that shit. Don't judge me by my past. Judge me by what I'm currently doing. Because let me tell you something, nobody in the face of the planet is perfect. Nobody ever is. Nobody. You cannot name one person on this planet that is a perfect person. We all make mistakes. We all fuck up. But that's what makes us human. That's what makes us people. That's how we learn. That's how we grow as people. We make mistakes through trial and error. We make mistakes and we learn from those mistakes. But when you sit there and you hold somebody's mistakes against them, well that just makes you a fucking asshole, doesn't it? And uh, I'll be honest. I've been through a lot of shit the last seven years. A lot. And I'm finally at a good place, like I said the other day. I'm in a very good place in my life right now. I'm starting to work on my music again. I'm hanging out with my friends more. I'm spending more time with family as much as I can. I'm working on my music a lot more. I'm doing more shit. So I'm at a very good place in my life right now. Like I said the other day. 
I'm not gonna let no motherfucker come in between me and my fucking peace. If you're a newcomer into my life and you try to interrupt my peace, or you try to judge me and act like you fucking know me, before you even fucking talk to me, then guess what? You're getting blocked. You're getting cut out of my life. Because I'll be honest, man. I've been through a lot more shit than most could ever even hope to bear. I've been through more fucking shit in the last seven years than most people will ever understand. I've lost friends because of the bullshit that I've been through. Just this morning I had to cut a family member off. I've lost jobs. I've had family members lose jobs. I've had a lot of fucked up shit happen because of all these assholes that I've dealt with. But you know something? I'm still here, motherfucker. I'm still here standing. And I always will be. Now, I do want to touch on a question that somebody had a long time ago. I can't remember where, I, where I'd seen it. But everybody always has asked, well, this person and all their friends have always asked this question. All over Reddit and Twitter and all this shit and that and the other, which shout out to all y'all that support me. But I've gotten this question a lot on various sites. And that question is this How did you get the nickname King of Akron? Well, let me tell you. My brother Zach who wasn't, you know, brother by blood, but he was family. He was extended family to me. He was one of my best friends from high school, and he unfortunately got killed in his family's pizza shop back in 2015. And believe me when I say that shit hurt more than anything in the world. Getting that call is the one call that I dreaded more than anything. Because Zach was one of my best friends from high school since ninth grade, dude. I came up through high school with this guy. This dude was one of the motherfuckers that I could call at 3 in the morning and he'd tell me, yo, what's going on? How you doing? What's up? What, what's up? What's going on? He's the kind of motherfucker that if I'm going through some shit and I needed somebody to talk to, he'd be right there to, to answer that call at 3 in the morning. He didn't care. But Zach was secretly known as the King of Akron because he always did shit for people and asked for nothing in return. He always put everyone before him. He always put others before himself. Whether that be his family or some random stranger on the street. He always put others before himself. He always tried to help out everyone that he fucking could. And when he passed, I promised his older brother and his family that I would carry on that legacy. That I would carry that torch and continue where he left off. Which is exactly what I do through these videos. I try to help you because if you guys may or may not know, for those of you that don't know, I am a survivor of suicide twice over. A couple of years ago, because of all this bullying that I've dealt with, I had attempted to take my own life twice on a live stream in front of the whole world and in front of my bullies that I was dealing with at that time. And it wasn't easy. And I can't even count how many times I had ideologies about it. How many times I made videos telling my family goodbye. And then I would miss them. People don't realize that these are all things 
that are very real and can happen when you deal with online bullying and deal with cyberbullying and you know being attacked every day and having your family and friends you know being attacked every day it's fucking sad That kind of shit shouldn't be going on. So when I reach out to you and I say, hey, are you okay? Or is there anything that I can do to help you out? I'm not saying that out of like, you know, like, oh, what, what can I do for you? No, I'm doing that as somebody that cares. Because I do care. Because I know what it's like to be on the edge. When somebody tells me that they're on the edge and they're wanting to end their life, I drop everything I'm fucking doing and I help that person out as much as I can. About three years ago, I had to talk a friend of mine down from suicide. He wanted to end his life. I sat on the phone with this boy for three fucking hours. For three fucking hours I sat on the phone with this dude talking him down. Letting him know that people like me fucking care. People like me actually give a fuck. Because yeah, I may not be out here, you know, giving fucking bottles of water or Gatorade to homeless people. That may be true. I may not be doing that. But you know what? It ain't always about the physical community. Sometimes the community on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, wherever. There's always somebody going through something. And those are the ones that I try to help out. The ones that get bullied every day. The ones that get attacked by their classmates. The ones that get judged for being different those are the ones that I stand up for those are the ones that I defend those are the ones whose backs I've got that kid in the back of your class that silent kid that doesn't say anything and gets bullied all the time yeah I was that kid in school I was that kid at one point. That kid that y'all point fingers at and are like, oh, ha ha, look at how weird this fucker is. Or, oh, ha ha, let's, let's, let's steal this dude's stuff and make him look like shit. Those are the motherfuckers that I represent. The ones that society casts out. The ones that society deem as being different or not normal or are deemed as the black sheep of society those are the ones that I stand up for because I am a black sheep and I'm fucking proud to be that I try to help people by being a good friend by helping people out through my music and letting them know that if I can't be there physically I want people to be able to hear my music and know that they got somebody here who's got their fucking back. Who knows what it's like to go through shit. Who knows and understands what it's like to be bullied, to be harassed, to be on the edge of suicide, to feel alone, to feel like you ain't got nothing. To feel like the whole world's against you. Because I was that dude and I am that dude. There are still times in this day where... I still question is what I'm doing right there are still days where I ask myself is this all really worth it there are still days where I ask myself why am I doing this there are still days where I'll get a text message from a random ass freaking troll that wants to be a dickhead and I still ask myself, 
Are they right about me? Is what they're saying accurate? Is what they're saying true about me? Is what they're saying about me valid? There are still things where I ask that. But then I also remind myself in the back of my head that these guys ain't worth it. These trolls, these people that attack me, they ain't shit. These guys that act like they know me don't really know me. Like I said, my circle of friends is small for a fucking reason. It's because I've been stabbed in the back. I've been walked on. I've been stepped on. I've been rolled over. I've been ran over. More times than I can fucking count. So if I call you my friend. You earn my trust. If I call you my family. You earn my respect. And you earn my trust. And you showed me that you've got my back. No matter what these other people fucking say. I've had to cut a lot of people out of my life this year. I've had to get rid of a lot of motherfuckers, but you know what? It was fucking worth it because getting rid of the people that didn't need to be in my life showed me who's really down. Who's really there to ride with me. Who's there to have my back when I need them most. Let me tell you something, there was a point in time over the course of the last few months where I didn't say a damn thing to anybody. I literally went silent for a good while. There was a point in time where I went silent for a good while. I went fucking ghost. I didn't post anything, I didn't say nothing, I didn't reach out to nobody, but you know something? Those that reached out to me and checked on me, those are the ones that fucking matter. People like... People like my girl, my brothers. My little brother Matt, who is one of my best friends. And everybody else that's close to me, like Marcus and Rachel. My boy Saunder. My teammate and rival for sim racing, Devin Marvo. My brother from Australia, Clint. My boy Steve, who checks on me every fucking day to see if I'm doing okay. My little brother of almost 18 years, Jake. Mine and Jake's best friend, Sam, a.k.a. Eli. My friend, Ellie, and her mom. My friends, Caitlin and Ashley. My brother, Daquan. My brother, Jose. Those are the motherfuckers that matter to me. Because they're the ones that went out of their fucking way to have my back. They're the ones that called in to check up on me and see how I'm doing. And I got a challenge for you guys. I do have a challenge for you guys. I want you guys to go silent for a month. Don't text nobody. Don't say nothing to nobody. Like, you know, just don't say anything. 
she who texts you first and checks on you. Like, don't start a conversation with nobody. Let them fucking text you. Let them get a hold of you. Just go silent for a few months. Watch and see who reaches out. Because the ones that reach out to check on you, they're the ones that fucking matter. They're the ones that are real. They're the ones that are ride or die for you. They're the ones who have got your back. They're the ones who are going to be there for you when shit gets tough. I'm going to tell you a little quote here that I saw recently on Facebook in a Facebook slash TikTok short. Can't remember who the guy's name was, but if I can find it, I'll repost it. And he said this, you don't need a million people to have your back. You need only three badass motherfuckers that have got your back. Because if you can count on your hand and you got three motherfuckers, three badass motherfuckers that are ride or die for you, that you don't have to question, that you know have got your back, then you got the whole world right there. You don't need a million people to have your back. You only need a small few people that are down to ride for you no matter what. I know who rides with me. My little brother Joey here. He fucking rides with me. This man's been riding with me since we were fucking kids. Mine and his best friends who are family to us. Marcus and Rachel. They're fucking ride or die for me. Everybody that I've mentioned before. Are fucking ride or die for me. And I'm ride or die for every single fucking one of them. Their fight is my fight. My fight is their fight. If somebody jumps out and fucking talks shit on them. Guess who's the first motherfucker to step up and say something. Right here. Me. And the same goes for them. If they see somebody fucking with me, guess what? They're jumping out and saying something without question. Without a second thought. And they've done it. And you know what's really fucking sad? The way the internet is going nowadays. How people gravitate towards garbage. It's sad. Then you got sad motherfuckers like Music Biz Marty and all these people that are just sad. And they think they're doing something, but really, they're not doing nothing. And let me tell you something. I warned this Marty character a while ago that if he didn't stop, he was going to become a slave to his own devices. He was going to become a slave to his own demons he was going to become a slave to the very thing that he created and guess what happened he didn't fucking listen now instead of him controlling the trolls the trolls control him the internet controls him but you know what controls me myself I control myself. I'm no longer controlled by these demons on the internet known as internet trolls. I'm not controlled by that anymore. I control myself. I control my future. And I'm going to leave you guys off with a little bit of inspiration here. If you got somebody out there that's telling you that you can't do something. That you'll never be this. You'll never be that. You'll never do this. You'll never be able to do that. You know what you do? You look at him and you say this. 
Well, I'm sorry you feel that way, but apparently you don't see what I see in the future. And if they still continue on about how, oh, you did this, you did that, and that, you know what you tell them? Well, I'm sorry that you're living in the past, but I'm living in the future, and my future looks bright. I guarantee you, you utter those few words, those two phrases that I gave to you guys, I guarantee you, you'll shut them down like that. Just super quick, man, just shutting them down real quick. Not every move that you make needs to be known by the public eye. Some moves are best done in secret, behind closed doors. Which is why I move a little bit differently. Which is why there's been people that have been hating on me. But you know what? That's fine. I say go ahead. Go ahead and hate. Go ahead and hate me. But there is something that goes along with that that goes back to the Marty shit that I do want to bring up very briefly. And that is this right here. This is actually from a Falling in Reverse song. It's actually one of the newest ones called Watch the World Burn. And in the verse, Ronnie Radke goes like this right here. If you hate me so much, then why you acting so... If you hating, then why you acting obsessive? If you hate me, then why obsess over me? Why obsess over what I'm doing? Every little move I make, every little thing I'm doing. Because clearly, if you hate me that badly, you wouldn't be acting obsessive. And yeah, there are people that act like I don't have dirt on them. Matter of fact, let me pull up the lyrics real quick so I can read to you guys this verse because this verse really relates to what I am and how I am. right here and the verse goes like this because I've been to places that you never want to go yeah I got dirt on people because they act like I don't know And yeah, it's true, I do have dirt on motherfuckers. And they do act like I don't know. They know something? I don't use that ammunition unless I need to. And I have not felt the need to yet use that ammunition. See, people take me as, you know, just some random special needs guy. People act like I don't pay attention to this shit, but I do. So just be wary for all y'all that come in that are brand new. Don't act like I don't pay attention because I do. I can sense your intentions a mile fucking away. I can sense what you're about just from the first sentence that you utter out of your mouth. And that's over the span of seven years of learning how to deal with shit. 
And to those that have rocked with me this whole time, I want to say thank you guys. I want to say thank you to my little brother Joey, Marcus, Rachel, everybody that I mentioned. You guys are fucking awesome. I fucking love you guys. You guys have had my back, and you've never once switched up. And I appreciate that. Also, massive shout out to Amber and her boyfriend Nick. You guys are the fucking dopest people ever, man. I fucking love you guys. You guys are fucking awesome. You guys are just as twisted as I am. You guys are just as twisted and fucked up in the head with your jokes as I am. Not gonna lie. You guys got some pretty fucked up jokes. And I love it. <laughs> but with that being said, man, I want y'all to know that I'm going back to the way that I should have been. Being a cold ass motherfucker that doesn't give a fuck about anything except my people and what I'm doing. Because like I said, I don't give a fuck about what the trolls say about me. Let them fucking talk. Let them run their mouths. And the same with you guys. If you got people talking shit about you, let them fucking talk. Because at the end of the day, half of them can talk to talk. But they can never walk the walk the way that you do. They can talk a big game, but half of them can never back it up. Now you got motherfuckers like Joey here who walks the walk and does the talking. And don't think I don't pay attention to what you do, Joey. I see you being a badass motherfucker, bro. I see you, though. But with that being said, man, I fucking love you guys. Fuck what these haters say about you, man. You guys are fucking awesome. And just remember, if they hating on you, that just means they're jealous of you. Fuck what people say about you. Keep being a fucking badass boss. Keep being a badass motherfucker. And fuck anybody that tries to get in your way. I fucking love you guys, man. I'm out of here, y'all. Peace. Oh, and just for the record, if somebody tries to get in your way, when you're in your own lane and you're on the road, you know what you do? Stomp that gas and run the fuck over and keep going. Oh, and uh, I will give you extra points if you guys leave the haters' shoes. I'll give you all a thousand extra points if you all leave the haters' shoes where they were at when you ran them over. <laughs> Fucking love you guys, man. I'm out of here, y'all. Peace. Good morning, everyone. Um, I know that, you know, I normally do positive things and say positive things, but I want to speak on something this morning. You see, this morning while I was sitting down working on beats and instrumentals for a couple of very good friends of mine who I'm currently working with, um, while they went off to do their own thing, I started scrolling back and watching all the videos of mine on YouTube and stuff and whatnot, and just going through everything as a whole. And I kind of feel like this video needs to be made to show what really goes on on the underbelly side of YouTube. See, a lot of people think that YouTube is just this happy-go-lucky place where nothing goes wrong and everybody's dreams to become a creator come true. And that is true to an extent. That is very true to an extent. A lot of the people that I do know that have gone on there and became creators did become successful creators. Somebody that... And, you know, no longer considers me a friend, but I consider a friend, Christopher Friend, who goes by Night with the Red Panda on YouTube and on Twitch. Even though he may not consider me a friend, I still consider him a friend. I, mean, I still consider him a very good friend. Always will. 
But there's a side of YouTube that no one wants to speak on. And I'm going to speak on it. Which is the dark side of YouTube. The bullying. The hatred. The scams. The blackmail. I've seen it all. See, the thing about YouTube is there is a very dark underbelly. And one thing I've learned is one of the groups that is ran by is the IP2 network who I've had run-ins with. Now, not all of the IP2 network people are bad. There's a few people from the IP2 network that I'm still very good friends with that are super cool and very, very nice people. But there's also the dark side where they'll make people do the most fucked up and vile shit to get views and donations and it's disgusting let me tell you I've witnessed some very awful things I've witnessed a dude getting maced for views I've witnessed one of my good friends that is now going down a very dark path Gucci's who and if you guys don't know Gucci's has done some fucked up shit once she started going down that dark rabbit hole. And that's what they do. They make you feel welcome. They invite you in and tell you, hey, you know, we're going to help you out. And to an extent they do. There are some that are genuine about it. But the new majority of the IP2 network are very evil fucking people. The same with the Mass Troll Mafia. And the Music Biz Martys and the William Glory Holes and the, the Cyrax Video Games 5.0 people. All those people are very evil and very, very messed up in the head. I watched this one guy that a lot of people know by the name of the Black Dragon Lord, who I personally know as Tony. I've sat there and I've watched this man get humiliated on live stream in front of thousands of people. In order to get on with the Bender Boys, they made poor Tony spread ketchup all over his fucking body. Dehumanized him by making him do that and making him scream at his grandmother saying that I want to be in the Bender Boys. And honestly, I don't cry that easily. But when I saw that, my fucking heart shattered and my stomach sank. Because at that point in time, I didn't give a fuck about the pedophilic shit that Tony did. What I gave a fuck about was those fucking people humiliating somebody that didn't fucking deserve it. Humiliating somebody that's disabled. And like I said, I'm not white knighting what Tony did. I'm not. I'm against that shit. But let me tell you something right now. When I saw what they were doing to that kid, my fucking stomach sank. I sat there. And watched, like I said, one of my very good friends from the IP2 network known as Gucci's, who's very well known on the internet for the not most nicest shit. Let's just say that back then she was not known for keeping her clothes on. But I sat there and watched these people roofie her, watched her get beat up, watched her get assaulted by several fucking people. Watch them get her shit face drunk on camera for views. And that shit broke my heart. Because outside of all that, Gucci's is pretty fucking chill. But what hurt me more than that was watching one of my childhood friends. The one that everybody knows is Gothy. Go from being this sweet, innocent kid that I grew up with to, unfortunately, these assholes getting her hooked on meth. And now she does meth almost every other fucking live stream. 
And trust me when I say that shit breaks my heart. That shit kills me because that was a good friend. Those people were good friends. And that's the shit that YouTube doesn't want anybody to see. That's the shit they try to sweep under the rug. They try to make it like, oh, everything's good. Everything's, you know, you go on there. You don't have to worry about being bullied. Yes, you do. You can go on there and you don't have to worry about nothing. Yeah, you do. You have to worry about everything. Like I said, I've watched a lot of good people turned evil. A lot of very good people turned evil. And let me tell you something. That is the worst shit you can possibly do to someone. I've watched good people throw away friendships for greed. Just like my former friend who I still consider a friend. Or who I'm no former friend of I should say. Christopher Friend aka Not With The Red Panda. He let greed get in his way. I got him going on Twitch, I got him going on YouTube, and the minute he catches a little bit of fame, what does he do? Throws away our friendship and sides with everybody, saying that I'm this and I'm that. Now yeah, I may have fucked up and brought his kid into it, but the only reason why I brought his son into it wasn't to embarrass him wasn't to attack him it was to wake him the fuck up and make him realize what the fuck he's throwing away when he gives into this shit and trust me when i said that shit hurt me a lot more than people think a lot more than people think that shit hurt watching one of my best friends of almost four years throw our friendship away for nothing Hurts. That shit fucking hurts. Let me tell you something. Over the course of the last seven years, man, I've lost a lot of friends. I've had to cut a lot of fucking people off. And I hated doing that. Because deep down I know the people that I cut off are genuinely good people. And that shit hurts me more than it hurts them. But I did what I had to fucking do. And that's the thing that people don't realize about YouTube or about getting famous. A lot of these motherfuckers when they catch a little bit of fame, they start cutting motherfuckers off. And distancing themselves and becoming loners until they got nothing left until they got no one left to turn to I know I've got a name to me I'm very aware of that I'm very aware of how big I am but you know something I don't let the fame get to me I don't I never have because who I am now is who I used to be back in the day before I was famous. Who I am this very minute is who I was back then before my name blew up. Who I am right now is who I'm still going to be 10 years from now. You can put a million dollars in front of my face and tell me to sign on mainstream label, but I'll never take it. I'm not going to take that million dollars. You know what I'll do? I'll take that money and I'll give it back to that person and say, Here, give it to somebody else that wants to be a sheep. Give it to someone else that wants to make a deal with the devil and throw their life away. Because let me tell you something. When I make music, it ain't about how much money I can make in a week. How much money I can make in a year. Yes, money as a tool does help. That's very true. But for me, it's more about putting out a message that people can relate to. It's about showing people that there's still people out there like myself that give a fuck. There's still people out there like me that actually and genuinely care. Because I've been at the bottom. And a lot of people don't realize 
But everything I have now, I didn't just have handed to me. I've worked my ass off every day for years to get where I'm at. Let me show you something. Y'all see this phone right here? This phone is the very phone that I started doing music on back in 2009. I recorded my first song in 2010. And I've had this phone ever since. And you want to know why I keep this phone? Instead of upgrading to the newest iPhone? Because this phone right here reminds me of where I fucking started. Before I even began touching FL Studios. Before I began messing with Ableton Live. Or before I began messing with Band Lab or Soundtrap. Or all these other music programs to be able to do my music. This is what I started out on. I recorded my very first song in this very house. My very first song was recorded in 2010 in this very house. But like I said, that's the sad, dark side of YouTube. That's the very sad, dark side of YouTube and social media that no one wants to speak about is that people trade money for lies they trade friendships for greed and fame and fortune they do anything they can that is vile and disgusting for views and it fucking sickens me like I said I've watched a lot of good friends sadly go down that dark path that they'll never be able to come back from. And that shit hurts. And that's just the truth of it, man. A lot of people never want to see the dark side of YouTube. They only want to see the fame, the glory, the glitz, the glamour, the money, the cars. They don't ever pay attention to what really goes on. Like I said, you can take away everything that I have. Take away the necklaces, the rings, the crown. Take away everything. And I'll still be that same person I am now that I was 10 years ago. And you want to know why? Because I don't switch up for nobody. I don't forget where I came from ever. I've never forgotten where I started, and I never will forget that. But I'll tell you this. This shit hurts watching good friends go down a very dark path that unfortunately will ruin the rest of their lives. Like I said, I had to watch my childhood best friend, Gothy, go... From this sweet innocent kid that I grew up with, who was one of my closest friends, to now becoming a meth addict on a constant basis, doing meth on every fucking live stream, watching her throw her life away. And trust me when I say that shit hurts. And trust me, as a friend, I tried to be that friend. Because let me tell you something, one thing I've learned, if you got a friend that's an asshole to your face, they're a true friend, because they're going to tell you how things really are. And trust me when I say, I was blunt as fuck. I was straight up with Gothi. I fucking told her straight the fuck up that she needed to quit the fucking meth, and that she's ruining her goddamn life and throwing her fucking life away. And that she needed to get fucking help. And you know what she responded with? The typical and unfortunate and sad but true response of, You're being mean. No, I'm not being mean. I'm being a real fucking friend. Because a real friend 
tells you how it is. And they don't beat around the fucking bush. They tell you what's going on. And they're honest with you about it. They don't care if they hurt your feelings. Sometimes hurting your feelings isn't hurting your feelings. It's called tough love. We've all had to go through it. I know I've had to go through it multiple times. I've had several wake up calls. In my life. I've got friends that'll tell me when I'm being a fucking asshole. I've got friends that tell me, hey, dude, you're doing something fucking stupid. Knock this shit off. Or, hey, dumbass, quit doing that shit. You're acting like a fucking idiot. And those are the kind of friends that you need in your life. The kind of friends that really tell you what the fuck is up and they don't beat around the bush. Those are the realest fucking ones that you got around you. Those are the ones that you want to surround yourself with and you want to know why? Because those are the motherfuckers that when shit gets real, they're the ones that are going to have your back. They're the ones that are going to be there when no one else is. All these other little friends that are just sugarcoating shit, saying, oh, it's okay, it's okay. No, you don't want those friends. Because those friends will get you killed or thrown in jail for the rest of your life. Those friends aren't going to be there when you fucking need them most. Like I said, I've met a lot of very good people over my years. I've watched a lot of very good people unfortunately go down the dark path that they will never be able to come back from because they're so far deep into it. And if I'm being completely honest, I was almost one of them. I was almost one of those people. And thankfully I wasn't, because I had my friend and my man with a fucking tell me, hey, dude, you're doing some shit, you're going down a bad fucking path, get the fuck out of there. And yeah, that getting out of that bad path, yeah, that had taken four or five years, but you know what, I'm out of it now, and I'm back to where I should be. And I'm proud about that. Yeah, I may have lost some friends all the way, that's fine. Like I said, it does hurt losing friends. Watching friends throw their life away. Watching friends get sucked into the addiction of getting subscribers, the addiction of getting donations, the addiction of fame and glory. That shit sucks watching your friends go through that. Like I said, I almost became that. I almost became that without even realizing it. And looking back now, I'm glad I did. I'm glad that I left YouTube when I did. Because if I had stayed, I would have been in a much worse place than I am now. I would have been in a far worse place than I am right now. I'm in a much far better place than I was a couple months ago. And you know, unfortunately, I've also now watched a lot of people, you know, succumb to addiction and get stuck in that addiction. I've also watched a lot of good friends on YouTube, unfortunately, take like their own life due to the bullying and the harassment. And it's not easy to deal with. It's really not. As someone that's been a victim of this shit, I can say firsthand without a shred of a doubt that it's not easy dealing with it. Going through what I went through is not something I would wish you know my worst enemy. 
going through what I've gone through over the last seven years, let me tell you something. Most people would have checked out and ended their lives already. And if I'm being completely honest, a couple years ago, I was almost one of those people. I almost took my own life twice in a row. Because of the bullying. Because of the hatred. Because I didn't know how to handle that kind of situation. I didn't know who these people were. I didn't know how they found me. Well, I know now because of my bitch of a fucking ex, Candle Smith. But let me tell you something. Back then, I didn't know how to deal with this shit. I didn't know what these people were or weren't capable of. So I was scared for my life. I did what I had to do to survive. And trust me when I say there's been many a times where I've looked back. On those videos and on the shit that they've sent to my mom. So let me tell you. I'm embarrassed by it. I'm ashamed of a lot of it. But at the same time. I also know. That I did what I had to do to survive. And I know a lot of what I said and done. Might not have been good. Might not have been okay at all. Yeah I may have done some shit. That may have been degrading to me. And very nasty. And gross. That's just shit that I shouldn't be doing. But you know, when you're in that position, and you don't know what these people are capable of, you will do anything. And I mean, you will bow down and you will do anything to make it stop. You will do anything to make sure that they don't bug you. To make sure that they don't harass you. And that's coming from someone that's been a victim of these people. A lot of people sit there and say, oh, you don't have to do it. You don't have to bow down to those people. You don't have to do it. They're saying, yeah, that may be true. But when you're in that position of not knowing what someone's capable of, you'll do anything to make sure that those limits don't get pushed. When they blackmail you and they tell you to jump, you say how high. Trust me, I did it. I've gone through it. And looking back now, I wish I never did bow down. Looking back then, I wish I never did do any of that shit that they made me do. But like I said, I did what I had to do to survive. Okay? I did what I had to fucking do. To protect myself and my family and my friends. Do I regret what I had to do? No. Am I ashamed of it? Yes. But let me tell you something. There's nothing worse than watching good people lose themselves. To fame, money, greed, power. Those four things are very fucking dangerous. Not to mention the lies that people say about you. And trust me when I say, I get lies told about me every fucking day. Every day, there's another video being made about me. Every day, there's some other fucking rando person fucking making up lies about me saying that I'm doing this now when clearly I'm not and trust me when I say that shit can't hurt it can but at the end of the day I know what I signed up for I know I signed up to have haters I know that and I'm aware of that But one thing I've also learned is that if you ain't got haters, you ain't going nowhere. If you ain't got haters, you ain't doing something right. And trust me, I've got a lot of fucking haters. A lot. But you know something? Even the haters. 
Even the fucking haters show me that I'm doing something right. The haters, to me, are just people that are lazy. They're too fucking lazy to get up off their asses and do what I do. Because I'm going to tell you something. Last night, I sat down and did four to five instrumentals back to fucking back between 10 o'clock last night and 6 o'clock this morning. I worked my ass off while they run their mouths. And you know what I say about them running their mouths? Let them fucking talk. Let them fucking talk. Because at the end of the day, talk is cheap. Actions speak louder than words. Every time. I don't care who you are. I don't care what you believe in. At the end of the day, you cannot deny that actions speak louder than words, by far. Actions speak volumes. And that's the one thing I've noticed about a lot of people on the internet nowadays. A lot of these people that are trolls and bullies and, you know, just not good people. They talk a big game, but at the end of the day, they can never back it up. And if they try to, they usually end up failing. Like I said, I was almost a victim of the dark side of YouTube. I was. And I'm glad that I'm not. I'm glad that I'm not a victim of that shit. And to my friends, and my family that pulled me out of that shit, I want to say thank you so fucking much. Because of you guys that were there when I needed you, and you guys pulled me out of that shit. If it wasn't for you guys pulling me out of that shit, I would still be in that shit. I would still be in that place that I was two, three months ago. Because of you guys, I am now on the path to getting my life back and slowly becoming the person that I used to be 10 years ago. And I can genuinely say that I'm proud of that. I'm proud to say that I'm slowly becoming the person that I was and should have been this whole time once again. I'm very proud to say that I'm getting back to normal. I'm proud to say that my life is finally going the way that it should have this whole fucking time. Like I said, a lot of people will do anything for views. And in doing anything for views, they tend to lose who they are and where they came from and where they started. They let greed take over them. They let the fame go to their head. And that's what's so sad about a lot of people nowadays. A lot of people will let the fame go to their head. A lot of people will let the money go to their head. And to those people, I say this. What are you going to do when that money disappears? Hmm? What are you going to do when you're not the next big thing? What are you going to do when you're not the next big artist on the billboard charts? What are you going to do when your label kicks you off for not being up to date on everything. Being with the latest trends. Being the next big viral thing. Come on, tell you something, man. Half you dumb artists, half y'all young artists out there are dumb as fuck. 
y'all y'all make a little bit of money and the first thing you do is buy yourself a fucking Lambo and a fake gold ass fucking chain and you sit there and talk about a life that you don't live and that right there alone makes you fake as fuck let me tell you something that one of my personal favorite artists that I look up to and somebody that I inspire to be like, somebody that's inspired me to keep it real, somebody that's inspired me to stay independent, told me in a video, well not me specifically in a video, but it was a video that he made. And this artist goes by the name of Ryan Upchurch. There was a video that he made a while back, it was like last year sometime, and he said this, you can't write a song that you don't live. You can write a song that you don't live, but your lifespan is going to be that fucking big. If you write a song that you do live, your lifespan is going to be endless. You can free roam that shit and be yourself. Because if you're always writing songs that you don't live, you're always, you're always having to be like, okay, I have to think like this. I have to do this. I have to do that. I have to pretend to do this. I have to pretend to be this so I can put on this fake persona. But me, I don't put on a fake persona. Everything I speak about in my songs, I've either lived or I deal with on a daily basis. I did grow up around cars. I grew up going mudding with my friends. And a lot of people don't realize is that song, Street Racing Scene, that I'm most known for. That song isn't just an anthem for the car culture and me paying respects to a culture that I grew up around and grew up in. But it also pays homage to how I grew up. When I was a kid, a lot of people don't know this, man, but when I was a kid, I was raised in the backwoods in Washington State on a fucking dairy farm out in the middle of nowhere. And you know what me and my friends did when I was a teenager? You know what we did for fun, man? We went out, we grabbed my friend's dad's truck, and we went fucking mudding, dude. Every weekend. And if it wasn't mudding, I lived on this fucking dirt road where there was like this stretch of road right by the end of our road. It was literally a quarter mile long. I used to watch motherfuckers up there fucking drag race that whole thing. From sundown till sun up, the next day on every Saturday, they'd be down there. Fucking sundown to sun up, fucking racing down the fucking road. And then when I got up here, and I moved up here with my family, that's when I started getting into drifting. That's when I started watching a lot of my friends, you know, going to local tracks, and doing drifting and having fun. And now they're competing at either a grassroots level, or they just do it for fun. That song represents a lot more than what people think. And that's the thing. If you're real with people. And you are yourself. You're going to gain a lot more fans. Like I said, to all you young artists out there that think that it's about the money and about the chains and about the girls and the bitches and the cars, you're fucking full of yourself. You're fucking full of shit. Because you know what's going to happen when you give into that shit? You're going to become another fucking industry plant just like everyone else. Why do you think being an independent artist is the best thing right now? Why do you think independent artists like Tom McDonald, Ryan Upchurch, my boy Kim Putty, who did that song Jordan that went viral on TikTok. You got people like my boy Wigs Wigan over in the UK. You got people like my boy Christian James from Australia. Both of whom are actually very good friends of mine. 
You got people like my homie Cryptic Wisdom. All these people do their own thing and they stay independent. And you want to know why they have so many fans? Because they relate to people. They can relate to what people go through. Their struggles, their issues, their heartache. They've done, they've done gone through that shit a million fucking times. And that's why I'm staying independent. The label that I'm going to be running, I'm going to run it correctly. I'm going to give those artists that I bring on that are very close to me, that are very good friends of mine, that I work with on a daily basis, those are the motherfuckers that I'm bringing on. Because like them, I want to see them blow up. They want to see me succeed and I want to see them succeed. And a lot of y'all fucking labels got the shit backwards, man. Y'all got the fucking bullshit backwards. I'm going to give y'all the secrets of success right the fuck now. I'm going to tell y'all what it is. So for all y'all independent artists out there that want to start your own label, you guys can do so. When you start your own label, don't make people pay 30 40 50 dollars no what you do is you produce your new artist shit for free let that money come in and you give them a hundred percent of what they make at first because they're the ones putting in the fucking work they're the ones putting in the effort now when they start going they start blowing up then you take maybe say 30% and you give them the rest because by the time y'all get big that 30% is going to go towards tours, shows, promotions it's going to go towards merchandise towards stuff to help you guys out when you're first starting out don't make people pay and that's the problem where a lot of producers and a lot of labels get stuck. They end up making people pay 50 to to $100 trying to do that get rich quick shit. Let me ask you this. Do you want a label that makes you get rich quick and you crash and burn within the first fucking year? Or do you want to have a label that's sustainable and is able to do good shit for a long time? Think about that. Too many people are charged way too fucking much. Or y'all dumbass fucking label owners trying to make people pay to be on a label. Bitch, where are you? A fucking bank or a label owner? You as a fucking label owner don't have that right to make your artists pay to be on a fucking label. You know, it's funny, y'all label owners act like, oh, I want people on my label. I want people to, you know, work with me and blow up and do good shit. Well, if you want people to do good shit with you, stop making motherfuckers pay to be on a fucking label and you might get somewhere. That's where you're fucking failing. You're making motherfuckers pay to be on a label. Paying somebody to be on a label? It's like paying, it's like me paying my boss for me working at Walmart. Not that I do work in Walmart, but me paying you to be on a label is like me working at Walmart and me paying my boss for me working. You see how fucked up that is? That's why all y'all motherfucking record label owners that run independent labels, y'all need to stop being greedy motherfuckers. Take a look around you. Take a look at the talent that's around you. And help those people out. If they need beats. And they're moving. Send them 10 to 12 beats. To tie them over until they can. You know. Get where they're at. And they can record shit. You know what I did with my buddy Paul. When he was moving. From Maine back to Ohio. I sent him 20 plus fucking beats to listen to while he was moving so that he can get ideas in his head 
and when he gets set up, he can record his shit, send the vocals over to me, and I can mix and master them, and send him the finished track for him to put out. That's how you run a fucking label, people. You don't do fucking handouts saying, oh, pay me for this and you could be on my label. If you pay me $50, you could be on my label. Man, fuck that. If you want to be a fucking real label owner, which I have been in the past, I have been the owner of a couple labels. I've been to the top with major record labels. And if you want to fucking get to those top levels, you got to start at the bottom and be willing to put in that work. And that's where a lot of y'all fucking artists and a lot of y'all producers and label owners that are out there nowadays, that's where you guys fuck up the most above all else. Y'all want the fame and the fortune and the money and to be able to make a living, but you never want to put in the fucking work to get there. You never want to put in the fucking effort and the fucking work to get somewhere. What, you think Eminem didn't fucking work his ass off to get where he got? You don't think Inters the guys that run Interscope Records, you don't think they didn't work their asses off from the ground up to become one of the biggest fucking labels in the world? Yeah, they did. Every label in the fucking world had to start somewhere. Let me give you a prime example of a metal band that I'm still very good friends with to this day. They are very nice people. By the name of Suicide Silence. A lot of you guys might know those people. Do you know that when they first blew up, do you know that they took themselves on tour overseas with no label backing they did their first tour ever which was in Australia overseas they did their first tour with no label backing and barely any fucking money to be able to make it back and you know what they did they fucking made that shit work and they killed that shit Look at Ryan Upchurch. He started Hollywood Boy Records. And look where he's at. He started from nothing. He's a prime example of starting from nothing. And working your way up. That man started in a little fucking shack. Behind his family's fucking house. In a little tiny. I think he said it was like a 12 by 12 shed. Behind his family's house. And look where he's at now. Making millions and doing good for himself. Why? Because he did what he had to do. He didn't make people pay him to be on a fucking label. He put in the hard work and did what he had to do. And helped people out when and wherever he could. That's why a lot of y'all fucking new label owners out there. That don't know what you're doing are failing. Because you want people to pay you for you doing nothing. And when they pay you, you don't do shit. You sit there on your ass and say, Oh, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, I'm going to promote this, I'm going to promote that. When really all y'all are doing is sitting there fucking taking and spending your money on fucking weed, drugs, and other stupid shit. But you know what I do every time I get a little bit of money? I either put it towards content creating stuff that I know I can make content with, whether it be gaming or other shit, or I put it towards my fucking career as a music artist. I put my money where it should be going, which like I said, is either towards creating content that people want to see for gaming, or I put that shit towards my music career, man. I don't sit there and blow my money on dumb shit. I don't sit there and blow my money and say, Oh, 
oh, I'm gonna do this, but I'm actually over here spending it on fucking 50,000 fucking pounds of crack and heroin. I don't do that shit. Every single thing I've got, I have fucking earned. I have worked my ass off for. The computer tower that I have right now, bought by me. By yours truly. And speaking on that, there is a question that somebody had the other day that I do want to answer. A lot of people have been asking me what they do. Why aren't you on Twitch? What happened to your Twitch? You were doing so good. Allow me to explain. See, a couple of years ago, my now, well, former friend, Chris, a.k.a. Now with the Red Panda, helped me out a little bit. I had only 15 followers on Twitch. He blew me up to 300 and something. By rating my channel, he blew me up to 300 and something followers, which is good. But from there, I took it and I ran with it on my own. I was posting every day, doing stuff that I needed to do. And you know what happened? Music Biz Marty and the fucking trolls happened. They saw that I was making very real fucking money. And you know what they did? They mass reported my fucking Twitch. And got me shut down. And now every time I make a brand new Twitch, that's what they do. They find me and they mass report it. That's why it's so hard for me to be able to make the content that you guys want to see. Because these motherfuckers want to sit there and do that dumb shit. And make it to where I don't get fucking paid. And believe me, it fucking sucks. So yeah, that's why, unfortunately, it's hard for me to, you know, do anything. Now, I do have a Twitch. I do have one. But I'm not going to be able to do anything with it for a very long fucking time. Until I know for sure that these trolls are gone. And that sucks. Because that's money out of my pocket that I could be earning. That's content that I could be creating and fun that I could be having with you guys. So believe me, that does suck. And it does hurt to know that I have to do this. But it is what it is. But trust and believe, once the trolls are gone, your boy's gonna be back on Twitch for fucking sure. You're going, your boy's gonna be grinding out that fucking content for fucking sure. Yeah, everybody wants to know why I'm not doing well. It's because of these fucking trolls, man. They're mental manipulators and they're fucking psychopaths and sociopaths and just straight fucking weirdos, dude. But like I said, don't you fucking worry. Because I will be going back to Twitch very soon as soon as the trolls are gone for good here in the next few months as soon as the trolls are gone for good your boy is gonna be doing shit for sure so you can fucking put your money on that for sure I am gonna be on twitch very soon as soon as I know for sure that the trolls are gone your boy is gonna be back on twitch and I am gonna be having my no fuck around mods that everybody knows I am gonna have my no fuck around zone mods that I know for a fact don't take shit from nobody. And those people know who they are. Those people know exactly who they are. And trust me. The mods that I had before. That are badass motherfuckers. That didn't take shit from anyone before. Those are the same fucking ones. That I'm going to fucking have. Back on my shit. Because they don't fuck around. They see you doing dumb shit. You're gone. They're the no fuck around zone people. They see you coming in trying to troll me, you're gone. They see you trying to pull some fuck shit, you're out of there. They see you trying to dox them or my friends or family, you're gone for good and you ain't coming back.
So yeah, that unfortunately guys is why I sadly am unable to stream on Twitch right now because of I'm still dealing with the troll shit and trying to get rid of them, so that's why. But like I said, do not fear. Soon enough, I will be back. I can promise you that. And yes, I will be doing gameplay. Yes, I will be doing music. Yes, I will be doing covers. And yes, I will be doing artwork. Because I know a lot of y'all motherfuckers have been asking me about artwork, which I'm not done in quite a few months. Which I'm trying to slowly get back into. But yeah. The whole point of this stream, man, like I said, was to show you guys what really goes on on YouTube and on social media. The shit that I've gone through. The shit that I've dealt with. The friends that I've unfortunately lost. The family that I've had to cut, uh, cut off as of recently, unfortunately. The people that I've watched go down bad roads. I'm doing, I basically made this stream to teach you guys the lesson and to show you guys that you can be on social media. You can do YouTube and still be successful, but be very wary of groups like Mass Troll Mafia, IP2 Network. Not all of IP2 Network, but some of them. There are a few good ones, but a majority of them are trash. You know, people like the Music Biz Martys and the William Goyles just be wary of those people. Because once they grab a hold of you, they don't let go. And I don't want to see you guys go to that. I want to see you guys be successful, man. I want to see you guys live out your dreams as content creators. Like I said, I'm not trying to scare you guys away. I'm just trying to give you guys a warning of what can happen if you're not careful. Me? I unfortunately did not know about that side of YouTube. I did not know what a troll was. I didn't know what a low cow was. I had no idea. Which if you ask me, I fucking hate that term low cow. And I'll be honest, whoever made that term up, I want a fucking bitch slap. Because that term is fucking degrading. And it's disgusting and it's sickening. It dehumanizes people, man. Come up with a better fucking term than low cow, dude. Come up with a better fucking term because that shit's just degrading and disgusting and dehumanizing. Come up with a different fucking term that doesn't degrade a person, man. For real. When you call someone a low cow, you're basically telling them that they're no better than a fucking cow. That they're just there to be used up and milked out. Every day for your personal pleasure. And if you don't like what I said about that. Ask me if I fucking care because I don't. Matter of fact, you see how my hand is empty right now? You see how my hand is empty right now? Nothing in it, right? That's all the fucks I give. That's all the fucks I have. I don't care if I piss someone off by saying that. I don't give a shit. And if you got a problem about it, well, go cry to somebody that gives a fuck. Because I sure as hell don't. But with that being said, man, I hope that, you know, I give you guys a little bit of an insight on what YouTube can be, can very much be like if you're not wary and you're not alert, and you're not careful. Like I said, I've watched a lot of good fucking people go down bad roads. And I don't want to see you guys go down that same bad road. I don't want to see that for you guys. I want to see you guys be successful and do good shit. Well, that being said, man, I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your Saturday morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever you guys are at. And I will see you guys later on today for another stream, which will either be a gaming stream or a possible music stream. I don't know which. I haven't decided yet. But that being said, man, I fucking love you guys, and uh, I'll catch you guys later. And on that note, fuck the haters.
keep being a boss like you guys are always doing, man. Fuck love you guys. Be a boss, not a follower. Be a leader, not a sheep. Peace. Ah. What's up, Facebook? Now, I know a lot of people have said to recently to not act out of anger and, you know, post shit out of anger. But you know what? This time and today is a very huge exception to that. Because today, Music Biz Marty had two people come to my house and steal two things right off our fucking porch. And if you don't know the situation and what's going on, basically what Music Biz Marty does is he takes and sends people to our house. Come to my house. He basically takes and sends people to our fucking house and have them knock on our door asking for shit. But today was totally different. Today, these people blatantly stole shit off our fucking porch. And like I said, normally I don't act out of anger. But it's not just me that's pissed off. It's my whole fucking family that's pissed. So I'm not just speaking for myself. I'm speaking for my family. Marty, I'm calling you the fuck out. I am calling your ass out, motherfucker. And I'm going to give everyone here a fucking warning. Anyone that sees this, I'm going to give y'all a motherfucking goddamn warning. I'm going to give y'all a motherfucking warning. The next motherfucker that rolls up to my fucking house and takes something without fucking saying anything or without fucking asking, I don't give a fuck who you are. I'll call the goddamn cops and you're getting arrested for theft. And Marty, if you keep this shit up, you're going to get arrested too, motherfucker. Because you're having these people do this. You're doing this shit of pretending to be me when you're not me. You got these people out here pretending to be me. Having them take shit that ain't theirs to take. And it sure as fuck ain't your goddamn call you fat ass motherfucker. So Marty, fair warning, back off. And like she want one of your little followers to get arrested, I suggest you back the fuck off, dude. Because if you don't back off, you forget, Marty. I know your address. I know where you live. I can easily call the police there and have you arrested for making these posts on the Facebook marketplace trying to have people steal my family shit. That chair that you had them steal, that was a $30 chair that was a gift to my mom's from my stepdad. That was a gift to her from him. That was a gift to her from him. And so you had somebody come up and fucking steal it. And then, you had somebody come up and steal something that was actually for my dog for when he's outside. Like, really, dude? Grow the fuck up, Marty. You're a disgraceful, despicable piece of fucking shit. You're just mad that I won't go on your motherfucking panel 
or do what you want me to do. So this is your way of getting back at me, right? This is your fucking way of getting back at me. Well, you know what I say? I say, fuck you. You're mad that I'm doing shit that I want to do. And the, you're mad at the fact that I don't fucking bow down to you anymore like I used to. Well, guess what, Marty? I'll never bow down to you. Because you're a low-life fucking piece of shit. You're a drunk, you're a fucking pillhead, and you're a goddamn dumphead. I mean, look at you. You fall asleep on live stream after taking Ambium. You get shit-faced drunk. And then you have people steal shit from my family's home. Do you not realize that you could get arrested for that just as much as they could? Do you not realize that, Marty? So, Marty, if I were you, I'd shut the fuck up and I'd back the fuck off. Because if you don't, I got your address. And I will inform the police in your area of what you've been doing. And yes, I have proof of this shit. So I can show the police in your area, and your best belief, they will be doing something about it in your fucking area. Like I said, I'm not speaking for myself. I'm speaking on behalf of my motherfucking family downstairs that you're fucking stealing from. You ain't stealing from me, you're stealing from my goddamn family. There's two things you don't mess with in this world, Marty. A man's way of making a living and his goddamn family. Those are the two things you don't ever fuck with. A man's money and a man's family. You don't ever fuck with those two things, boy. Marty, you act like you're untouchable, but you're not. You're not untouchable, dude. Like I said, I'm not acting out of anger. I'm acting out of you breaking the goddamn law and committing a goddamn felony crime. I'm not acting out of anger. I'm acting out of being pissed off because you're breaking the fucking law. You're doing criminalistic shit. Thinking that you're untouchable, but newsflash, fat fuck, you're not untouchable. You only think you're untouchable. But nobody in this world is untouchable, Marty. No one. I don't give a fuck who you are. No one in this world is untouchable. Not even you. So, Marty, unless you want to go to fucking jail, for three plus years for theft and putting people up to doing theft shit along with those people committing the crime I suggest you back off and that's not me saying that that's my fucking family saying that my family is the one saying that shit not me And I know what you're going to say. Oh, well, if they're saying it, why don't they get on camera and saying it? Because they know your little fucking games. And so do I. Marty, you're a manipulative fucking psychopath. You're a narcissistic, manipulative little fucking bitch. And you're just mad at the fact that I don't bow down to your manipulative ways any fucking more. You know, it's funny, I was laying down sleeping, trying to get some rest, because, in case you haven't noticed, I've been a busy guy lately, working on my music, hanging out with my family, hanging out with my friends, I've been a busy guy, very busy, but I can't say the same for you, dumb fuck.
You don't even work. All you fucking do is sit on your goddamn fucking ass on the computer all fucking day waiting for me to go live or waiting for me to get on panel. But here's the thing, Marty. I ain't ever getting on your goddamn panel ever again. I'm never getting on your panel again. So you can forget that idea really quick. Because ever since I left your dumbass fucking bullshit community, Marty, I've done quite well for myself. I got my life back to where it should have been the whole fucking time. And I'm proud of where I'm at now. I got my friends, my family, and my career back to where it should have been. And trust me when I say, I have no intention on going back to that person that you fucking made me out to be. Because Marty, what you don't realize is this. I will never be who you want me to be. I will never bow down to you. I will never be that piece of fucking shit that I was a couple years ago that you turned me into. You turned me into a monster that I didn't want to be. You turned me into something that I never wanted to be. And now I'm speaking out about it. Why don't you tell them, Marty? Why don't you tell them about how you and Kano conspired to make me look like a pedophile? Why don't you tell them the truth, Marty? You conspired with Kano and Masshole to make me look like a pedophile because you wanted a target that looks different. Why don't you admit it, Marty? You targeted me because I look different from everyone else. And you thought I was weak. You targeted me because you saw somebody that had just gotten out of an abusive relationship. After four years of being in an abusive relationship, you saw somebody that was still fragile and weak. And what'd you do? You took advantage of that, didn't you, Marty? You want to know why you took advantage of that? Because you're a sad, lonely piece of fucking shit that's going nowhere with his life. You only like to pretend that you're going somewhere, but you're not. And it's time you wake up and realize that what you're doing is getting you nowhere. Like I said, I'm not doing this because I want to. I'm doing this because my family asked me to say something. Because they're tired of you fucking stealing from them. They're tired of you targeting me and them and fucking them. They're tired of your dumb ass Sending people to, the, to our house every fucking day, bugging them when they work, they have to sleep so they can fucking work. And you're over here sending people to our house every fucking day, knocking at all hours of the day and all hours of the night just to annoy them. Because you think you're being a fucking slick ass, but you're not. So Marty, my advice to you, cut the crap or I'm calling the police in your area on you the next time you do this shit. And trust me, I will be telling them what you've been doing. Oh and Marty, while we're at it, why don't you tell them the fucking truth? About how you turned my best friend Jenny of three fucking years against me. 
Well, to tell the truth, Marty, you sent people after her because you didn't like the fact that Jenny was fucking helping me to go against you. You hate the fact that people like me go against you and stand up to bullies like you. Marty, it's time to man the fuck up and do like the rest of us and get a real fucking job. And I already know what you're gonna say. Oh, you don't have a real job, motherfucker. I did have a real job until you fucked me out of it. You took away my ability to make fucking money. You ruined my job at Twitch. I had a high paying ass job at Twitch, boy. And what'd you do? Because you didn't like me making money, you took advantage of that. And you had people mass report me for false fucking bullshit that I didn't do. All because you can't stand to see me making money. To see me making money. Pardon me. But Marty, I'm telling you right now, man. You're not in control anymore. You're not. You only think you're in control, but really you're not. I see through all your bullshit, and I see through all your goddamn lies. And that's why every time I confront your ass, and I speak the goddamn truth, you get quiet really fucking quick, don't you, boy? You get real quiet real quick. And you know what that tells me? That tells me that you're scared. That tells me that you know that I know the truth. And while we're on the subject of speaking the truth, Marty, why don't you tell them about how you're a goddamn pedophile? About how you had you and your little girlfriend go after somebody and committed pedophilic insinuated acts. You can sit there and say that person in that video wasn't you all you want, but we all know the truth, Marty. That was you. That was you in that video, and you fucking know it. When I confronted you about it, you admitted that that was you, and then what'd you do? You tried to fucking backpedal and say that it wasn't. But we all know the truth, Marty. That was you in that video. You are a piece of shit pedophile. The very thing you try to say that I am is exactly the very thing that you are. Marty, you're nothing more than a piece of fucking shit. Whose live stream I will never fucking go on. So Marty... Do yourself a favor and cut the crap and move the fuck on. Find someone else because it ain't me. Like I said, Marty, you think I'm coming on to your live streams ever again? Newsflash for you, dumbass. I'm not. I don't give a fuck what you say or what you do. I'm never coming on your goddamn live stream as long as I fucking live. I would rather be caught dead than be on your piece of shit garbage stream. Because that's all your streams are, are garbage, Marty. Like I said, I'm not speaking out of anger. I'm not speaking out of spite. I'm speaking out of you committing fucking crimes against people. I'm speaking out for my family that you've been stealing from today and have attempted to steal from in the past. Let's be honest, Marty. You're desperate for views because you know without me, you ain't got shit. 
So what do you do? You resort to shit by having people try to steal what don't belong to them. Like I said, Marty, and like I said to anybody else out there that thinks they're going to steal from my family, think again. Because if I catch you stealing from my family, I'm not only getting you arrested, but I'm getting that dumbass Marty that made you guys show up. I'm getting him arrested too. Because he's an accomplice. So fair fucking warning to anyone out there that thinks they're going to steal from my family and get away with it. You're sadly fucking mistaken. My family's tired of being stolen from by a bunch of assholes that don't know jack shit about anything. My family's tired of being stolen from by a bunch of assholes that think they're badass motherfuckers. But really, they ain't nothing but a bunch of low-life fucking nobodies. So fair fucking warning, one last time. The next person to try to steal shit from my family. Like I said, this isn't coming from me. This is coming from my fucking family. Okay? This is coming from my mom and stepdad. The next time anyone shows up to my house or to our house and tries to steal something, the cops are getting called and you're getting fucking arrested. Plain and fucking simple. You try to steal from my family again, you will be getting arrested and you will go to jail for theft. Plain and simple. So unless you want to get arrested for theft, don't show up here thinking you're going to take shit because you're not. Okay? Plain and fucking simple. Fair warning. You try to steal something from my family, you're getting arrested. Plain and simple. And that ain't coming from me, that's coming from my family. Try to steal something again, and you're getting arrested. You fucking dumbasses. And yes, Marty, that includes you. Send someone to my house again to try to take something. And not only are they getting arrested, but I'm coming after you and getting you arrested as well, motherfucker. Fair warning. Cut the crap or you're going to be facing jail time really quick. Get the fucking hint. And back off. Dumbass motherfucker. Get a life, you fat fuck. What's up, everybody? Gotcha. No, fuck that. So, Jasmine, I didn't want to make this post, but. You went public with my shit. So. That's alright. That's alright that you went public with it. You want to know why? Because you went public with my shit. By sending trolls to my profile. After I left your ass for a very good reason. That gives me reason. To expose you. For the lazy fuck that you are. You know, it's funny. You sit there and say that I'm dramatic. You sit there and say that I have unresolved trauma. Some of that may be true. But look at you, bitch. Look at you. Well, right, let's be honest here, Jasmine. You don't fucking work. 
You don't do nothing. And the only time that you stick around is when someone is lying to your face saying, you know what? I'm going to tell you the fucking truth. Your mom's a fucking drug addict. A recovering drug addict like your mom is what's holding you back. Well, let's be honest here, Jasmine. You don't want to hear the fucking truth that your mom's a former druggie who you can't seem to get away from. Well, let's be honest, Jasmine. You don't fucking work. You don't. Alright, it's time to man up and face reality, Jasmine. What are you going to do when your mom dies, huh? What are you going to do when your mom passes away from old age? Or whatever she passes away from. What are you going to do when she's gone? Huh? What are you going to do for work? How are you going to live? How are you going to survive? You got nowhere else to fucking go. And what's gonna happen when your Uncle Bobby passes away? Then what? Where are you gonna be? I can tell you exactly where you're gonna fucking be. On the streets, homeless is where you're gonna be. And you wanna know why? Because you make up all these excuses to not fucking work. You make up all these excuses as to why you can't fucking work. Bitch, grow up. You know, that's what's wrong with your generation, Jasmine. You're too fucking lazy and don't want to fucking work. You're using anxiety as a fucking crutch to not fucking work. There's plenty of people out there in the real world that are just like you that fucking work regular jobs every fucking day and make a real living and do good for themselves. Meanwhile, what do you do? Sit on your ass, play games all day, Waste your money on a doll collection that you'll probably end up selling to be able to make ends meet when you're fucking 40. Jasmine, the only reason why you're mad is because I keep it 100% real. I keep it honest. And yeah, you're right. I may have some issues that, I'm, that I need to work out and I am working those out I am working those issues out but you know it's sad the fact that you can sit there and send trolls to my Facebook after I leave you after what you fucking said to me talking about how if we have kids, it'll be out of financial gain and not out of love and caring. That pissed me off. That's why I fucking left your ass. Can you know what, Jasmine? Yeah, you're right. I do have unhealed trauma. Trauma that will never fucking leave. Trauma that will never fucking go away. You're right. I do have unhealed trauma, but you know what? Any fucking parent that doesn't get to see their kid ever would understand. You've never had a fucking kid in your goddamn life. So you wouldn't fucking understand what it's like to not be able to see your kid because of your ex. You wouldn't understand what it's like to be a parent because you've never been 
a fucking parent in your life. I am a dad. I'm a dad that never gets to see his fucking kid grow up. Because my ex decided to give that kid up for adoption the day it was born. Without my knowledge or consent. I didn't even know I had a fucking kid until it was fucking born. So trust me when I say Jasmine, you need to keep your fucking mouth shut. When it comes to shit like that. Because like I said. You've never been a fucking parent. You've never been a mom. You've never been a parent. So what right would you have. To speak on that. You don't have that fucking right. And unless you've been through it. The way that myself. Or any other parent out there. Has been through it. You would never. Understand. And I'll be honest right now with everybody here watching. This is the kind of crap that I deal with. Everybody wants to know why it's so hard for me to be with anybody. People like this bitch Jasmine are the reason why. People like Jasmine are the reason fucking why. And I'll be honest, I've been in abusive relationships on and off for the past eight years, and I'm fucking tired of it. I've been in abusive relationships mentally, verbally, and emotionally, and I'm fucking tired of it. I'm tired of going through this abuse. I'm tired of sitting there. Getting with fucking people that only want to be with me for who I am. Or want to get with me because they want something out of me. Not because they care or because they want to see me happy. No. Half these motherfuckers out here want to get with me because they see what I can do. They see the money that I can bring in. They think... That I'm this rich guy. Well, newsflash, I'm not rich. Yeah, I may be famous, that may be true. But I'm not rich. Do you know that all that money that I should be making, I don't get to see one red cent? Did you know that? I thought y'all didn't know that, did you? As big of a name as I am, I don't get to see one red cent of the money that I should be making on a daily basis because of these motherfucking goddamn bitch ass trolls on the internet making their name off of me. Making their money off of my content. And you want to know why I don't get to see that money? Let me explain it to you like this. Let me break it down for you. You see, these motherfuckers like to take my content, steal my content, after I create my content, and then you know what they do? They report my channels and get me shut down. They mass report me for no reason, because I don't give them what they want. Because I don't do what they want. I don't give them what they want, which is the skull scratcher comedy shit, or raging out on a live stream. I don't give them that. That's why they hate me. And you know what? I don't give a fuck if they hate me, if they hate me or not. I don't care. I'll tell you this though, I'm about fucking tired of not making the money I should be making. And you know, that fat ass 
Music Biz Marty says that he ran me off YouTube. Nah, he didn't run me off. I left on my own accord because I wasn't about to stick around a toxic, bullshit ass fucking place where I was going to get attacked every fucking day and lose myself. I wasn't about to lose who I am as a person. So you know what I did? I made the hard choice and I fucking left. So I could do better for myself. So I could get well. So I could get better. All y'all keyboard warrior little trolls are is a fucking joke. <laughs> That's all you keyboard warrior little trolls are is a fucking joke. You get your laughs and your kicks off of other people's misery. So y'all want to know the real reason why? I haven't made any money off my shit. That right there is why. Because every time I create content and I get somewhere, these motherfuckers come in and they ruin it by mass reporting me falsely for no fucking reason. Oh, now I have a little fucking message to your generation, Jasmine, from a legendary rapper himself by the name of Tom McDonald. You might want to see it. My Maybe you need to take a look at this and open up your eyes and ears, Jasmine. And realize how fucking lazy you really fucking are. That's just a cold, hard fact. 
your generation doesn't want to do anything. And by the way, shout out to all my Gen Xers out there, man. Fucking love you guys. All my Gen Xers, what's up, man? Fucking love you guys. Good Jasmine. While your generation was sitting inside on your fucking cell phones all fucking day, you know what my generation was doing? We were outside getting dirty, having fun. Going camping, riding dirt bikes, getting muddy, going fishing. Fucking ourselves up by jumping off of trees and rocks and shit. Well, you're inside worrying about which bathroom to use because you can't identify as either being a man or a woman. My generation had shit figured out. While you're still sitting there, Jasmine, in your room, trying to figure out what the fuck to do with your life, I know where the fuck I'm going with my life. I got my shit figured out, and I'm working on that shit every fucking day. What are you doing? Sitting on your ass? Not doing anything? Sleeping all day? Sitting on your phone all fucking day? Eating all fucking day? Not doing a damn thing? Wow, people like me are actually out here working our fucking asses off. You know, it's funny, Jasmine. You talk about how I got issues. Why don't you look in the fucking mirror? The only one with issues, with real issues here, is you. Your generation is what's wrong with this world. People like you, Jasmine, are what's wrong with this world. People like you are why this new generation is such bullshit. People like you, Jasmine, are the fucking reason why good people like me get hurt so fucking goddamn much. You want to sit there and talk about, oh, woe well, is me. But then when somebody says something you don't agree with, you automatically pull shit saying that I got issues. Bitch, get out of here. I'm not the one with the fucking issues the same way that you are. My issues are for legitimate reasons. Your issues are all up here in your fucking head. The only reason why you don't make money isn't because you can't work. No, you can work. You just choose not to work. You choose to use your autism. You choose to use your anxiety. You choose to use not wanting to be around people as a fucking crutch. Me, I can't work a regular job. Because the minute I get a regular job, these trolls are fucking getting fired. The same way they got my friend Jordan fired. And the same exact fucking way they got my biological father fired. What? You don't think I don't want to work? Let me tell you right now, bitch. I would be happy to fucking work. Okay? I would be... So happy to fucking work a regular job. But you know what? I'll never get that opportunity. But you know what? I didn't let me not being able to work a regular job stop me. Because I'm over here busting my ass. While you're over there sitting on your ass all day not doing nothing, I'm over here getting my fucking music and my future ready. While you're over there sleeping all day and all fucking night, I'm over here working my ass off. Coming up with the next beat, the next instrumental, the next song, the next everything for my future. Like I said, I've got my shit figured out. I've been having my shit figured out, Jasmine. It's time you man the fuck up and become the grown ass adult that you say you are and start fucking acting like it. It's about the time you started acting like the adult that you claim to be 
and actually do shit for once in your fucking life. Instead of sitting there taking care of your drug addict of a mom, how about you do this? How about you put your mom on her ass and you start thinking for yourself? How about you grow the fuck up and start worrying about you? Start worrying about yourself. Go out, get a fucking job. Start worrying about your future. Because like I said before, what are you going to do when your mom dies? Huh? What are you going to fucking do when she dies? You ain't going to have nowhere to go. You ain't going to be able to survive or make it on your own. Yeah, you might know how to cook and this now and the other, and that's fine. And let's not, let's not forget about how y'all fucking leave the house a goddamn mess. Let's not forget about how you leave dishes every fucking where. How your fucking room is a goddamn pigsty. And you got shit all over the fucking floor. You know what's sad about you, Jasmine? The fact that you have no aspirations to do anything with your fucking life. How you can live in that filthy ass dump and not be fucking miserable is beyond me. Because let me tell you, if that were me, I'd be in there with fucking trash bags every fucking goddamn day cleaning that fucking shit up. And until you fucking clean your room up, you get your act together and you start at and you start acting like a grown adult, like you should be doing, then you're never going to go anywhere in life. You're never going to have a good relationship. You're never going to do anything in life. And I know these things are hard for you to understand, or hard for you to hear at least, and the only reason why they're hard for you to hear is because it's the fucking truth. You never want to hear the fucking truth. You would rather run and hide and change the subject than to hear the cold hard fucking truth. And the truth is, Jasmine, you're fucking lazy. The truth is, Jasmine, you don't want to work. The truth is, Jasmine, unless you get off your fucking ass and get your ass in fucking gear and actually start to do something with your life, you're never going to go anywhere. Like I said, what are you going to do when your mom dies? She ain't going to be around forever. When your mom dies, you're not going to know what to do. And don't get me wrong, I love your mom to death. Your mom's a sweet lady. She really is. But to your mom, I say this. Miss King... You need to get off your fucking ass and kick your daughter's ass in the fucking gear. Because by you not making her get a fucking job, by you not making her do anything, you're enabling her and showing her that it's okay to be lazy. It's okay to not, to not have a future. It's okay to not want to do anything with your life. It's okay to not want to have a sustainable future. You're basically showing your own kid that it's okay to be lazy. Therefore, you're enabling her just as much as she is enabling herself to be this fucking way. Like I said, Miss King, 
I got no issues with you. I don't. But unless you fucking get off your ass and you get your daughter in the fucking gear, she's not going to know what to do whenever you die. She's not going to fucking make it. And Miss King, I'm going to say this, and I know you might not like it, but I am going to say this. Mine and Jasmine's friend Gray both agree that Jasmine needs to fucking work. She needs to have a fucking job and stop using her anxiety and all this other shit as a fucking crutch. I'll try working. That's the difference between me and you, Jasmine. I've actually worked. I know how to work. I've actually worked a regular job. I've worked regular jobs. I've worked odd jobs. So I can honestly say right now that if my mom passed away and I moved over to Australia with my friend, I'll know what to do. I'll be able to survive. Because I've already got a plan set in motion. I'll know how to live. I'll know how to survive. Because when I'm over there, I'm not just going to sit there and game out all day. I'm not just going to sit there and work on my music. No. I'm going to be doing other shit too. I'm going to be scrapping. I'm going to be helping out doing whatever I can to help out with being able to fucking do what I can to help my brother out that's allowing me to stay there. I'm going to be doing whatever I can to help him out to show that I can make a living. Whether that be scrapping or doing whatever. Like I said, you could shut the internet down. You could cut it all off and take it all away from me right now. And there's a reason why I'll be able to survive. Because I have done it before. For four plus years, I did scrapping. And I made pretty good money at it. But the reason why I don't do it anymore is because the price of metal has gone down so fucking low that it's not even worth fucking doing. You get like maybe 25 cents or a dollar per pound of metal. And Jasmine, maybe if you stop collecting all those fucking dolls that you collect and actually stop having your nose in your fucking phone all fucking day and actually got off your fucking lazy ass and got a fucking job, you might be able to have a future for yourself. But until you stop being fucking lazy and sitting on your fucking ass all day, you're never going to be able to do anything in life. Jasmine, by your fucking age, I was hauling in hundreds of dollars of scrap metal a week. Around your age, I was making a couple hundred bucks a week. Hauling in scrap metal every day, up and back, up and back, up and back. Every fucking day, all fucking day, that was my fucking job. Piles and piles and piles of scrap out back. Piled up to the brim for over a fucking month. And then hauling it off to the fucking scrap yard to get fucking paid. Or whatever I could do as far as hauling it up there. To the yard that day, if we needed it, guess what? I did it. I hauled in over 700 pounds of scrap metal a fucking week. Every day for four years, I did that. Up and back, up and back, up and back. Yeah, it might not have been a regular job, 
but it was still honest pay. It was still an honest living. But you, you wouldn't know what an honest living is if they hit you right in the face, Jasmine. And like I said, I know you must hate seeing this video right now. I know you must hate this right now. But you know what? It's the fucking truth. And it's about damn time somebody fucking told you the truth. It's about fucking time somebody told you the fucking truth. Like I said, unless you get off your fucking ass, unless you get off your goddamn fucking ass and actually fucking do something, you're never gonna go anywhere in life. That's how you get out from underneath mommy's thumb. And you start thinking for yourself. And you start worrying about your future now. Until it's too late. You're not going anywhere. In life. You're not going to know how to survive. You're not going to know what to do. You're never going to be able to have a place to live. And that's just the cold hard truth, Jasmine. That is just the cold hard fucking truth. Like I said, I've had bad shit happen to me. Okay? I've had a lot of bad shit happen to me. But you don't see me sitting around not doing anything about it. No. All this bad shit that's happened to me, that don't hold me back. I get my ass right back up, and I keep fucking going. While you're sitting there being lazy, I'm over here working. While you're there sitting on your ass, I'm over here working. While you're over there sleeping all fucking night and day, I'm still working. So Jasmine, you want to be a grown adult? Welcome to the real world, kid. Because everything I just said to you is what it's really fucking like. Everything that I said to you is going to happen to you. And I'm not saying that as a threat. I'm saying that as somebody that can see what's going to happen to you if you don't change your fucking ways. And that's just reality, Jasmine. That's just fucking reality. Unless you man up and you try to do something with your life, you're fucked. So Jasmine, good luck in fucking life. Because at this point, you're not going to be going anywhere anytime soon. You talk about wanting a good future. What are you doing to fucking change it? Only you have the power to change your fucking future. So if I were you, Jasmine, I'd stop being a lazy bitch. And get off my ass. Get out of the fucking house. Go find fucking work. And do something. To make an income. Because until you do those things. Your life's going to be over before it even fucking began. Like I said. Love, what, love or hate what I said. I don't really care. I'm just being honest. So Jasmine. Get off your ass. And stop being lazy. Oh, and, uh, get a fucking job, you lazy ass.
gonna be honest here. And honestly, I don't give a fuck who I get mad and don't get mad. I'm gonna say this on one time and one time only. And I want everybody to fucking listen up. I, I am sick and tired of Marty's name being brought up. I'm tired of it. If that waste of space wants to make videos on me, let him because I don't care. His videos don't bother me anymore. His little lies are just that. They're lies. I'm fucking tired of every time I try to move away from the bad energy and do good for myself. Somebody, somehow, somewhere, in some way always brings Music Biz Marty back into my fucking life and up in my business. And I don't want him in my space. I don't want to hear his name. I'm tired of it. I don't ever, I don't care what that dumbass is doing. I don't care. I give a fuck about me, my people. That's what I care about. My friends, my family, my career. Marty is nothing but a waste of space evil. And I have proven this time and time again. And I am honestly tired of it. So to everyone on my friends list, I say this. Please stop bringing up Marty's name. The only reason why he's affecting what I'm doing is because he keeps getting brought up. If you stop bringing something up, then it's not going to be brought up ever again and you will be able to move on. That is the only reason I have not been able to move on. It's because people keep bringing him up. I don't give a fuck if he's Having people show up in my house and try to steal shit. We got that covered. We got security cameras. We got signs. We got everything we need to protect the house. And as far as my music goes, I got that shit on lock. Because here's the thing. I'm not posting my music to the internet until I get that shit copywritten. And he can't fuck with it. I am tired of being brought up in this negative bullshit. Because all Marty does is manipulate and lie. Manipulate and lie. I mean, have you not noticed the videos of his titles are there to try to lure me in to get me on a panel? Have you not noticed that? Because I have. Every title he does on me is used to lure me in, to try to get me on panel to rage out.
and I currently am at peace. I don't want or need Marty's nasty, negative, evil filled energy in my space. I don't need his nasty, overbearing garbage around me. I mean, have you ever heard the term, leave it alone or it'll go away? Well, that's what I want everybody to do. To please stop mentioning Marty, because eventually he'll go away. The more you bring him up. It's just like feeding a cat. It's like feeding a stray cat. The more you feed it, the more it's going to come back. You don't feed it, it's going to go away and find somewhere else to go eat. Same thing with Marty. You keep bringing up his name, he's going to keep coming after me. You don't bring him up anymore, eventually he's going to stop. So I'm asking everyone on my friends list to please, please stop bringing him up. I want to live my life in peace. My life currently is in a very good positive state and I'm not going to let the negative energy of Music Biz Marty ruin where I'm at. The less you feed something energy, the faster it dies. If you don't feed Marty any, any energy, he's going to die off and go away. He's going to fuck off and go somewhere else. So I'm going to kindly ask this one time. To all my friends. Please stop mentioning Marty. I don't care what he's doing. I genuinely do not care. I don't. I want nothing to do with him. I don't want to hear his name ever again. I want his name to be out of your guys' vocabulary. Like I said, I do not care what he is doing. He could be playing a game of poker and winning and I would not give a fuck. He could be competing in the lottery. This man could be competing in the PGA Tour. And I would not give two shits. So please, everyone, stop mentioning Marty. The more you mention him, the more he's going to come back like a stray cat. If you don't bring him up, he's going to go away eventually. So please, stop feeding the Marty. Stop it. Bad.
No feeding Marty. We're not here to feed Marty our energy. We are here to feed each other our energy of positivity and helping each other out. Stop feeding Marty. Stop feeding that creature. Because the more you feed it, the more he's going to come back. The less you feed him, he's going to go away real quick. Plain and simple. Peace. So one last time, I'm going to say this. Please stop mentioning Marty. I do not care what he is doing. And I do not care to... This next song right here goes out to me, bitch, because I went to fucking jail last night. It's all right, bitch, you know I got locked up, right? I'm fresh out of jail, bitch, I'm feeling right. You know what I said when I got arrested, right, bitch? This is what I said. <laughs> Sigh!